The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Be still and know that God is God. So that he may be exalted in his world. He may be exalted in our lives. And even now, he may be exalted in this act of worship. Sanctify our hearts and our consciences, O Holy Spirit of God. By your visitation that we may take our part in this service with much reverence and devotion, and that you'd receive from us the honor, glory, and praise due to your holy name. Accept all that we offer, and we pray that even but a portion of it may redound as a blessing to strengthen, to nourish, to lead us on. Indeed, as the week unfolds, your presence will be with us to guide us through the temptations, the distractions, indeed, all that comes our way. Accept our worship, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so from the provincial hymnal, we begin with 167. From the provincial hymnal, 167. Come see the place where Jesus lay and hear angelic voices say. <laughs> service continues on page 98 of the prayer book. We extend a warm welcome to one and all, not only for in-house worship, but those who are joining us via the social media platforms as well as radio. Today we observe the fifth Sunday of Easter, and as we continue to bask in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray that with renewed and refreshed hearts we may live victorious lives bearing fruits that reflect the presence of Jesus Christ, not only as Lord and Savior of our lives, but indeed of the world. The week has passed, 
We have fallen short. We have been broken. We have been hurt. But God has been with us. We have been successful. We have achieved. But God has been with us. As this week opens, let us pray that we may always invite the presence of God into our lives to lead, to guide, to strengthen, to nourish, to lead us on so that whatever comes our way, we are assured that we are not alone and that our God will see us through. Lord, in your mercy. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The prayer of intent together. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. The colic for purity, almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our colleague for this morning is for the fifth Sunday of Easter, the fifth Sunday of Easter. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Invite us now to sit as we share in the ministry of the word. Illumination for the first lesson. Philip converts and baptizes a servant of the Queen of Ethiopia. The salvation offered through the gospel of Christ is freely available to all people. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a 
court official of Kandesi, Queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed is Psalm 22, Psalm 22, verse 24 through to 30. Psalm 22, verse 24 through to 30. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. I think I may have gotten my ducks mixed up. It's verse 24 to 30. Verse 24. I think I may have said 22, 24. So, verse 26 now, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. together. They shall come and make known to our people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Illumination for the second lesson. Through Jesus, we learn of the love of God. Those who seek to abide in the Lord must emulate his forbearance and forgiveness. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, 
not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as a Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us, those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn from the provincial hymnal, number 298, 298. Beloved, let us love. Love is of God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, the 15th chapter, beginning to read at the first verse, glory. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is a vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. 
Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the gospel of Christ. From the Mission Praise 1218. Mission Praise 1218.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Open our hearts, O Lord, to the piercing gaze of your word. And we pray that as we meditate and reflect, that word may find a place. It may be immersed and entrenched within us. And in our daily living may bear expression, testimony, and witness to your presence. Give grace that as your servant, I may speak in your name. You who are God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, together we say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And so for our foundation this morning, words from John chapter 15 and verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches, and those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Last week we wrestled with Jesus using a metaphor. The metaphor was, I am the good shepherd. And it continued into affirming that his people are sheep. They are like sheep, precious and wonderful. And he, as the good shepherd, seeks to look after them and to care for them and to know them by name. In fact, he is willing, as the good shepherd, to give his life for the sheep. Today, we reflect further yet another metaphor where Jesus affirms to us that I am the vine and you are the branches. Given the context in which Jesus was living, an agrarian society, a people who knew what farming was, an animal husbandry, he made the appeal to something to which they were familiar. We are told that over in Israel, growing vine and therefore being involved in what is called the viniculture, that is, drinking wine is a big part of their life in Christ. In fact, it is in the 8th century prophets. We also find that God did not really have a problem with the people and their drinking of wine, their viniculture. The problem was that they celebrated what they thought were blessings from God. But in their daily living and existence, they did not live in love one for the other. And so those who shared in what were called the summer and winter houses and thought that it was all a blessing from God, they had it wrong. Because whereas they celebrated those things, they failed to appreciate, to love, to exercise justice and mercy and compassion with those who surrounded them, especially the needy, the broken, and the hurting. It is in this context that I want us to reflect this morning that as we hear Christ speaking about vine and, and branches and uh, quite possibly the viniculture that was somehow linked to it, we realize that as a people of God, our connection must be rooted in Christ. We must seek to abide in Christ. And that becomes one of the key words or key focuses for today. Abiding in Christ. It is having a connection. It is being rooted, entrenched, and immersed in Jesus Christ. It goes beyond just a Sunday morning worship experience. It goes just beyond or whatever day of the week we choose on which to worship. It becomes a lifestyle. It is the way how we move every day because we are rooted and we are grafted into Christ. There are some persons who lay claim to the Christian life and for them it's just Sunday worship. Friends, this morning I'm here to tell you it can't be. It cannot be. There has got to be something more. There's got to be a rootedness. And that 
Rootedness comes out of our love for God in Jesus Christ. Do I love him enough? Does he mean enough to me that each and every day I am going to devote my life to him? That is why there are some persons who compartmentalize their lives. They reach to the point where once Sunday worship is over, I am something else. A friend of mine has a way of saying, you don't want the animal in me to come out. You don't want the animal in me to come out because the animal in me is not nice. And, and I laugh and I know my friend is joking. But the truth is for some persons, the animal comes out once worship is done. Because somehow there are persons who figure that once we worship for two hours or an hour and a half on a Sunday, then we're Christian. Nah. Nah. There has got to be more to our life in Christ. And that is why when we talk about abiding, we talk about a daily entrenchment in the Christ-like way in Jesus Christ who calls us into something special, something different. It is not the same. There has got to be now a correlated daily connection to Christ. And the church may not offer us worship opportunities every day. We may not be able to come and gather to worship. Almost as if to suggest that we could fulfill that abiding by coming to worship. That is why this morning now, I, I jump to that section where it says to us that those who abide in me bear much fruit. Those who abide in me live a particular way that their lives reflect the abiding presence of Christ. And sometimes we need to ask ourselves, do I cut off Christ from my life? Are there, times, are there times when I decide that I really don't need Christ at this moment because of what I'm going to do, because of what I'm going to say, because of something that I know I will undertake, I decide I have to cut off Christ. The thing about abiding is that there must be this constancy. There must be that sense of I must always walk with him. I must always express him. I must always affirm him with my life. And so Christ says, those who do not abide in me, they are like the branches which I will cut off. The branches that are thrown away. The branches that are burned in the fire. And so abiding now, if it's daily and it's finding expression, it involves our life of prayer. It involves our life of reading God's word. Worship, of course, begins the foundation of the week. But all these other things, sharing in the sacrament of the altar, seeking to cultivate Christian values that speak to the presence of Christ. And sometimes the greater challenge that we have in Christianity, and certainly for Christians, is that the abiding presence of Christ is not always found. It's almost like we park him. It's almost like, well, I really don't want him today. I don't want him for this moment because the animal in me has to come out. I have to do what I want. I have to settle what my emotion is and what my heart is telling me. I think I was fairly good at agricultural science. I think I got a two at CXC. And one of the things we had to do, certainly for SBAs, was grafting. You had to take a piece from another plant and you made an incision into the plant itself, the plant that was growing. And in taking that piece, when you made that incision and you put them together, then they were tied together with something, I don't remember what it's called, but it's almost like cellophane tape. 
and it would stay there until both are intertwined and then they became one. If it is that the peace that you put on started to bear fruit, then it meant you were successful. Any agriculturalists here this morning? Anybody? But at the end of the day, if it did not bear fruit, it meant that something was wrong. There was something that did not connect. There was something that did not gel and therefore you had to remove it. Because in the process too, one of those things could die. And usually it is the peace that is put on. For us being grafted into Christ, because that is what happens with us. For us to abide, we have to be grafted into. We have to be connected into Christ. We have to be honed in and locked in. Yes, like a heat-seeking missile, we are into Christ. But if we do not take from Christ the nutrients, if we don't take from Christ what he's offering in terms of our growth and development, then we are going to die, not necessarily physically, but our spiritual fabric will become weak. Our spiritual life will not mature. And I don't care what anybody says. The greatest thing for us is to grow spiritual life. There's no other way. It is growing our spiritual life. Because the spiritual life is connected to our souls. Our souls are connected to our hearts. And if that is not growing our heart, then we're wasting our time. We may come for the show. We may come because we want someone to see us and to acknowledge us. But where is the growth? Because Jesus Christ is about growth. He's about allowing and calling us, giving us the chance to mature and to bear fruit. And bearing fruit means the life we live reflects. So we're able to love. And that in itself will take 10 sermons. But just a cursory question. If Christ is in us, why is it that we're not loving one another? If Christ is in us, if we're really grafted into Christ, why is it a cursory question? Why are we not loving each other? We walk around with hatred. We walk around with ill will. We walk around with malice. We walk around with unforgiveness to each other. Can we really do that and say that we're grafted into Christ? Christ says that those who abide in me, those who are locked into me, those who are grafted into, those who are connected, entrenched and immersed into me, are people who share love. Because they bear fruit. And I thought about sharing with us this morning from Galatians. Down in Galatians, Paul was writing to a church that was wrestling with its own identity and what it was to be a disciple of Christ. And Paul writes in Galatians 5 and verse 22 into verse 23. He says, by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm going to read again. You can read when you go home. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Stop for a moment. And let us ask ourselves, if I am grafted and rooted in Christ, do I bear those kinds of fruit? 
Love becomes the first one that Paul mentions because Paul understood as we are called to understand that love becomes the foundation of our life in Christ. Love is a foundation and from it we have many tentacles, many tributaries, many hands flowing off that speak to that eternal principle of love. Where is our gentleness? Where is our kindness? Where is our self-control? Are these present in our daily living? Could it be that somehow, my friends, we just need to make sure that when situations arise, that we exercise self-control, we exercise, as it were, peace. We exercise patience. So I just may be speaking to that person who likes to fly off the handle. You know anybody like that? Or you're guilty of that? As soon as something happens, we fly off the handle. We're ready to cuss. And to cuss with those Nicely decorated words. You know what I'm talking about. We fly off with those. Because we have not exercised patience. And who is more patient with us than God? Who, who is more patient with us than God? Lord, we sin every day in thought. Word and deed. Sometimes we do some, some of the most dastardly of things. Can I get an amen? Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know what they are, but God knows. You can hide them from the priest. You can hide them from God. Those thoughts about hurting someone. The thoughts we have of hurting someone. That person who did something to us. The person who wants to take all the land that was left. And by the way, that's something I, I really have to speak to us about. Eh? Because there, there are too many complaints. And Anguillians love the land. But let me tell you something. You can't carry it with you. Plain and simple. So when you're going to spend all your life getting a lawyer to fight who own land or who move what and all of that and so on. I'm not saying that you cannot affirm what is yours, but Lord, some of us, we are just greedy with it. We're avaricious. And we want something to say, oh, I have 10, 15, 20 pieces to do what? You're going to invest? Okay, fine. But do you invest with a God-like mind, a Christ-like principle, or do you invest with greed filling your heart? Investing is not bad. I did economics. I failed it. <laughs> but that's because I couldn't translate what I knew into writing. But I did it. And I understand certain principles of it. But most of all, I understand a godly principle that we don't hoard. And that when we die, I don't care who you are, they could bring the fanciest of caskets and coffins and whatever else. And just as an aside, I had a funeral the other day and the coffin was bored. I'm actually musing about talking to us as a church family to go back to that. Seriously. No offense to our friends who are in the burial business, the undertakers. But just maybe we need to think about space. This is just an aside, just moving on a little. And we think of that space 
And you realize that the caskets we use, they ain't going anywhere. They ain't going anywhere. Could we consider boxes instead? That eventually will go and we may be able to reuse space. Yeah, I know. Some people, I huh? know. But stop and think about it. Because we're not getting more and more land. Sea coast, the coast, they're eroding. Very, very, come, eroding, eroding. Very slowly but surely. And so land is getting smaller. What are we going to do? Just stop and think about it. So I'd raise that in the context of my sharing. But certainly, no matter what we have, there is no U-Haul vehicle. There is no 10, 20, or 40 foot container. Because that's how they come. 10, 20, and 40 feet containers. None of them are behind our casket when you go into the grave. And just per chance, just per chance, whatever we leave behind, children are fighting over it. Because this one is getting that one a lawyer and that one is getting the other one a lawyer and over and over and over. And the court says, okay, let's do mediation. We don't want that. Because we figure in mediation, we lose. Our lawyer doesn't get to fight and be, as it were, grotesque. And be a warrior when it comes to it all. How do we assimilate Christ into our daily living. Allowing him to be the guiding principle in all our undertakings. Because the real issue is bearing fruit. But fruit only comes when we are abiding in Christ. And abiding in Christ means that there are certain principles. There are certain tenets. There are certain mores and values that reflect our life in him. So Paul comes on when he says, these are the fruits of the Spirit. And those who are rooted in Christ, these things will find expression in his or her daily life. And sometimes we figure that abiding is just on Sunday morning. That is why, friends, the Christian must daily take up that cross. Daily, daily, daily take up that cross to follow Jesus Christ. You can't take up a cross on Sunday morning for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You can't do it. I can't do it. I need something each day because Jesus himself warns me. He warns you. He warns us in Matthew chapter 6. And he says to us, do not worry about tomorrow. Get through today. Take up the cross for today. Yes, you want to make it a long haul, but you cannot get to tomorrow or on Tuesday unless you have gotten through today. Unless you have borne that cross. Unless I have carried that cross all in the name of Jesus Christ. And that cross could very well be not only the discipleship, which is the foundation of it all, but very specially, how am I going to love that person whom I know hates me with a passion? How am I going to forgive that person whom I know has nothing but hurt towards me and has hurt me before? How will I be patient with those who wrong me? And, you know, one of the greater challenges we have today is that Paul's words are, are really hitting home. In 1 Timothy, Paul says to us that in the last days, we will be lovers of ourselves 
and the pleasures and things of the world. I just want to stick with lovers of ourselves. You know what happens is that we have reached an age in human endeavor and certainly within our community that we are perfect people. We don't make any mistakes and with a, a brand of Christianity that seeks to permeate the culture. A brand of Christianity that says, you know what? I am perfect, I'm holy, I am better than them. And so, when they do their wrong, I, I, I frown on them. In fact, I castigate them. I look down on them because they are no good. And so we have become consumed with self as against having grace and mercy for others. Being gentle with others. Being at a point where we're able to say to others, I may not agree with what you're doing, but I am here to have mercy and to give you another chance. In fact, not just another chance, but as much as the Spirit will guide, lead, and direct. Because Christ himself, he gives us chances. He opens the door over and over and over again. And if there's anything that we need to learn is how it is that Christ is merciful to us. How Christ is gracious to us. Every one of us because we sin in thought, word, and deed, and what we have left undone. We, we can't walk around as if we're holy and more righteous than anyone else. We live with a sense of knowing salvation has come to our heart and to our lives. But it's not only about us. It is about the other and therefore I must have grace and mercy on that other person as well. But it only comes from a foundation of love. And love that is in Christ. And it's important. It is love that is in Christ. And we love him so much that we're able now to take the same Christ and allow him to be expression. You know what Paul says to us also in Galatians? He says, it is no longer I who live but Christ Jesus who lives within me. You know where that comes from? Paul was so rooted and entrenched in Christ. He was so connected and grafted into Christ. He was abiding so much in Christ that he wanted his, his followers, his readers, his hearers, he wanted us to know that when we look at him, we are no longer seeing him as an individual. But we're seeing the imagery. We're seeing the likeness. We're seeing what it is that Christ looks like. Can we ever achieve it fully in this life? No, we can't. But our aim must always be to live Christ-like lives that speak to who this Christ was. Love compassion, mercy, grace, forgiveness, standing for justice, truth, and hear what the colleague says to us this morning, the fifth Sunday of Easter. And I noticed we had a little struggle. This is just another side. The priest didn't call the page. And so there were some persons who were flicking and trying to look around. Yeah. The, the priest doesn't have to call the page. You got to mark your page. On Saturday night, before you go to bed, you mark your readings. What if there's no bulletin for that week? You mark your Bible. You mark your prayer book. So that you know, just in case the priest doesn't call the page, I don't have to worry. Because I know it's right there on page 170, the fifth Sunday of Easter. And so when we hear, let us pray, we can all join in. Please don't have to call the page. Come on. We're supposed to be maturing in this thing. Not like those in, 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 in kinder one and two, that you have to tell everything. We should be at a stage that we know, yes, we can pick it up. 
We can find it because it is marked overnight. Don't kill me now. At the end of the day, we are immersed in that. We know what is going on. But a colleague this morning says, no, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what a colleague says to us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you know what that is? That, my friends, is lifestyle. On Friday morning, I made the point in our reflection that because it is a passage we hear so many times at funerals, we have become so familiar with it that familiarity breeds content. And content leads to forgetfulness and to understanding. Because ever so often at funerals we hear, and Jesus said unto Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. It is not just a funeral text. But the colleague takes on John 14 and affirms to us a lifestyle. What is that lifestyle? That we live Jesus' way. We speak Jesus' truth. And we understand that Jesus is life. Because friends, without Jesus Christ, you and I are walking dead. Without Jesus Christ, you and I are walking dead. I don't know if you've seen the series Walking Dead. But there's a zombie apocalypse. And there are persons who have died, who have gotten new life. And they walk around aimlessly. Looking to bite those who are alive and turn them into zombies. And they're walking around aimlessly, aimlessly, aimlessly. Trudging through land after land after land. Nothing of worth within them. And sometimes we go after everything in life. We run after everything that life has to offer. We try to get our hands on everything that life has. Sometimes we run from church to church to church. Sometimes we run from this to that to the other. And have we ever stopped to wonder, why is it that I don't feel contented? Why is it that I don't feel whole? Why is it that my life doesn't seem to have any real worth? You know why? Jesus is not within. For a lot of persons. And yes, sometimes even those who come to church. It's not about Jesus. It's about something else. It's about the show. It's about that my resume, whether in this life or at my funeral. Maybe we figure that the priest or the preacher may preach the funeral, the sermon surrounding us. And how faithful we came. Sometimes it becomes a facade. It's a mirage. It's not real. Because we are not deeply rooted in Christ. The connection is not there. It's spotty. Last week I went to Antigua and while they had to use one of the local providers. I won't call no name. And Lord of mercy, I made one vow. Never again. Internet spotty, dropping, whatever, and all these other things and so on. Gene sending me a message and I get it 10 minutes later. And then I send one, getting 20. And I said, never again. 
and that happens with us sometimes. The internet, spotty, 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 spotty. It's not wholesome and fulfilling. And in life, we run after everything. St. Augustine said to us that our souls are restless until they rest in Jesus Christ. In who? In whom? Oh, come on. Said it in church. In whom? Never said in worship. It never said in the priest. Never said in positions in the church. In Jesus Christ. Those things can be offshoots. But then those things can sometimes pull us to the point where we figure that they are the more important thing as against Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to close on the soapbox and say to us that I want us to endeavor this week to seek to become more grafted, abiding in Jesus Christ. The hymn writer says, Abide with me fast falls the even time. The darkness deepen, Lord with me abide. When other helpers fail and earth's veins comfort flee. Friend of the friendless, abide with me. Can I tell you a little story? Jesus is always willing to abide with us. The problem or the challenge is we are not always willing to abide with him. And all he's saying, come, walk with me. I am the vine, you are the branches. To bear fruit, love, mercy, compassion, grace, whatever it is, Paul gives us a slew of them. I commend them to you. Make sure that you abide. You read his word. You offer the prayers. You meditate. Spend time with him. Not just for one day. But for each day. So that we become more and more. Of what he wants us to be. I've spoken to you in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God. The Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Invite us to sit or kneel as we are led in the intercessions, the prayers of the faithful. Let us pray. Everlasting God, give us the courage of Philip, who took the time to share his faith with a curious stranger. Remind us of Jesus' command to us to make disciples of all. May our faith be as strong as the Sam's, and may we proclaim his righteousness to future generations. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your world and we long for the time when all the families of the nations will bow down before you and the poor will eat and be satisfied. We pray for all world leaders who bear the heavy responsibility of providing for their populations. Give them wisdom to know what is right and the courage to make right decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, help us to use our influence to bring peace, joy, and fun into people's lives. Guide our people to those who can show them the way to experience fullness of life in Jesus Christ. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring to you the sufferings of those we hold dear, the struggle of those trying to cope with difficult situations, the pains of the sick both at home, in hospital or care homes, the loneliness of the elderly and the frail. In your great mercy, bring them comfort, relief, and reassurance that you are always with them in all their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, your Son Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light with no darkness can quench. We pray for all those who are going through the darkness of loss and bereavement. We thank you for the promise of eternal life and the hope of glory and commend to your everlasting love and care those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we go out into the world to face another week, Help us to live our lives according to the example of your Son, Jesus Christ. Free us from the sins of the world that spoil our life, so that we may be a living testament to your will for your world. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the, for the sake, sake of, of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Invite us now to turn to page 123 of our prayer book, page 123, and there we hear Blessed St. John speaking to us once again, reminding us that if we should say we have no sin, then we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we make confession of our sins, Almighty God is faithful, He is just, He will forgive our sins and he will cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Let us now use in prayer B, the top of page 124. And in humility and contriteness of heart, let us pray in confession together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy in us and forgive us. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God of mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. May he keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the greeting of the peace. Form A, the bottom of page 124. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit we were all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up our life. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share God's peace.
do we have anyone visiting with us this morning for the first time? If so, please stand so that we can give you a warm welcome. Notices for the week. This evening at 5 p.m., Bible study. Tuesday, 7.15 p.m., Mass with Hymns at St. Andrew's Church. Wednesday, Communion at the Farrington, the Quarter, Ray Hill, and the Quarter. Thursday, 6 a.m., Matins and Mass at St. Augustine's Church. Communion at Sandy Hill, Sea Feathers, and Long Road. 6 p.m., Joint Choir Practice. Friday, 6.15 a.m., Matins and Mass, Communion at Nursing Home, JTC. Saturday, 4th May at 10 a.m., Funeral Service for Felicia Ray at St. Augustine's Church. Next Sunday, 6th Sunday of Easter, Rogation Sunday. 6.15 a.m., Mass with Hymns. 8.15 a.m., Song Mass and Sunday School. 5.15 p.m., we will gather at the trough for blessing of the feeds. 6 p.m., Solemn Evening Song. Notices for the week. Thank you, Valdo. Do we have any birthdays today during this week? The birthdays going once, going twice. We have some persons. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. And as we thank you for the gift of life, we thank you that for that which you have bestowed upon your servants. You brought them through the past here, sustaining, strengthening, and guiding. It indeed is your grace that has brought them safely thus far. As they celebrate, we pray that you pour out your blessing upon them in a renewed and refreshing way. May they look upwards to yours and perfect of their faith to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for them. Keep them under the shadow and pinning of your wings and bless them with many more years of life. And until you come out, call them home. We pray, O oh Lord, that they would serve you faithfully all their days. These mercies and more we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. See, I'm, I'm not the only tease in the church. Someone just teased me and said, with all those birthday celebrants, we will have plenty cake to eat this week. <laughs> Invite us now to stand as we sing our offertory hymn, hymn for tithes and offerings, from the Mission Praise 1072. Mission Praise 1072 
In Christ alone, my hope is found. the Lord who took on flesh hellness of God in hell bless be and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross that Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied till every sin on him was laid. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then burst in forth in glorious ray, up from the grave he rose again, and he stands in victory. Since curse has lost his grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand no scheme of man can ever plot me from his hand till he Return or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. And now on page 126, page 126, prayer B. Father, we offer you the gifts which you have given us the bread, the wine, and the money. With them, we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work. To become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. 
as the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. So may we and all your people become channels of your love to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father, almighty, everlasting God. The preface of God the Son, page 131. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you. Join in our voices with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We invite you to sit or kneel, Eucharistic Prayer C, page 137. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to Almighty God. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and the love you have made known to us in creation in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of bondage into freedom, and out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Whenever you eat it, you do this for the remembrance of me. Choose you, my Lord, I bear thee. They make me love thee more. And after supper... He took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks to you, he blessed it. He gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do this for the remembrance of me. Use you, my Lord, I fear God, or make me love thee more and more. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. With our palms open and face in heavenward, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christian friends, we break the bread to share in the body of Christ. The second option for the Agnes Day Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. What shall we give to the Lord in return for all the blessings he has given unto us? Let us now lift up the cup of salvation as we call upon the name of the Lord, saying, Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy as thou shalt come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. During the administration of the blessed sacrament, we shall sing number 625. And if needed, 573, both are from the provincial hymnal. The first, 625, and if needed, 573.
brother, the body and blood of Christ. Tehran, the body and blood of Christ. Tehran, the body and blood of Christ. Dada, the body of Christ. Anshuri, the body and blood of Christ. Esli, the body and blood of Christ. Valencia, the body of Christ. the middle of page 148 we find the second prayer of thanksgiving middle of page 148 the lord be with you we pray together eternal god and heavenly father we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son jesus christ send us now into the world in peace And all persons in you, with gladness and singleness of heart, to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We do have our young people, children with us. We invite them to stand and their hymn, number 658, for children and young people, the young at heart. I uh, invite them to stand, and parents, please ensure that they are seen into a, a hymn book and that they are singing. 600. 58, the provincial hymnal. Jesus loves me, and this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong, yes, Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gift to open wide, he will wash away my sin, let his little child come in, yes Jesus, I know he does, yes.
Jesus, take this heart of mine, make it pure and holy thine. On the cross you die for me, I will daily live for thee. Yes, Jesus, I know he does, yes, Jesus. I know he does, as Jesus loved me, the Bible tells me so. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, you gentle lamb, in your gracious hands we are. Make us Savior what thou art. Live yourself within our hearts. Surround our young people, surround our children, Almighty God, with your grace and your heavenly benediction. Grant them your spirit of discernment that amidst the temptations and the distractions of this mortal life, they will always seek to choose you and walk with you as Lord and Savior. And in their going out and their coming in, May they be a testimony to you and to your saving grace. These mercies and more we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. May God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life and give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, remembering those whom you will love and care for now and forevermore. Amen. And our recessional from the mission, sorry, the provincial hymnal 456, 456. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness of my own I claim but only lean in Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand In this earthly race, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every wild and stormy gale, I anchor holes that will not fail. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground. Is sinking sand. His vow is covenant and blood are my defense against the flood. When earthly hopes are swept away, He will uphold me on that day. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When the last trumpet's voice shall sound, Oh, may I then in him be found, Clothed in his righteousness alone, Faultless to stand, before his throne on Christ the solid 
rock I stand, all on the ground it sink in sand, all on the ground is sinking sand. The Lord be with you. Let us now go in peace to love each other and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful day today.